Welcome, folks, to the first love discussion for Let Our Voices Echo. I'm Jaha, and I'm here with Mahadi Walker. Yeah, yeah. You know, he spent a little time over on in L.A., so um, he's back over here in the East Coast, giving us a little bit of what he has to offer. So I just want to hear a little bit about what you've been doing. Yeah, all right. Um, currently in the midst of working on, um, you know, a ton of new projects, new music, uh, uh, new videos, short film, um, a bunch, um, acting, modeling. The whole nine, but uh, yeah, I recently touched back down over here from LA. Um, you know, with everything going on over there in LA, uh, I just was kind of wiser for me to, to relocate for the time being. Yeah. Um, but I'm back and I'm excited. That's good. That's over good. Here. Yeah, COVID, COVID's doing a lot to a lot of people, but you know, yeah. I'm glad to have you. With that being said, uh, I think a pressing uh, topic now is. Um, the the ignorance in America and how mm -hmm. it's affecting how we're moving day to day, you know, with I'd say people as individuals, you have ignorance in like the media, you have you have it in, I don't know, uh, you know, in just different aspects. There's a lot yeah. of things that are out in the world that people aren't fully understanding. Absolutely. And I think that leads to uh, the discrepancies that we have as people. So you know, we're just going to have a nice little loose conversation about it. Um, so my thought with it is, uh, you know, with ignorance being so prevalent, um, it l allows people to kind of hide behind not knowing. Mm -hmm. And with that, you don't know what you're talking on. So you end up in a position where you're trying to give an educated um, response to something that you don't know fully. Yeah. And um, to to bring it more specifically, you know, we have our controversies in the world right mm -hmm. now in our society. You have the police brutality issues, you have the uh, the political issues, mm -hmm. you have whatever you want to call it, you can, you can name a bunch, but to speak specifically on those couple things, there's a lot of ignorance because people just haven't lived that life. Yeah. People haven't experienced certain things, so then they think that they don't exist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, having been, and you can kind of relate to it as well, having lived up here here upstate New York, we, yeah. we see a different type of life. You get to see a little bit of the inner city, mm -hmm. but you also get to experience the suburbs. Mm -hmm. You get to see both people who live in the inner city, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not trying to label, but yeah. you know what you get when you live in different areas. So yeah. with that, you get a different perspective on life. Absolutely. And um, right now you have a lot of protests going on and stuff like that, but you know, what what's your thought on ignorance's role in everything um i think i think we need to first address ignorance as a whole mm -hmm. um you know true ignorance or ignorance in its truest form is someone not knowing mm -hmm. um and to an certain extent like that there's a level of grace for someone that does not know okay. um there's so much that a child does not know so when you see certain behaviors from a child you know because you know mm -hmm. this child does not know and it's true ignorance you give a certain level of grace. Um, but I think something that we face in this um, country or the world as a whole is that we're getting into like willful ignorance as if, you know, certain information's not there or certain um, statistics isn't accessible. Right. Um, people are choosing to be in the dark about certain matters. And that's, I think that's what really has, you know, people, you know, upset. Right. Um, how long are we gonna say the same thing. How long are we going to show proof that this is happening? How long? Over over, you get what I'm saying? So is it truly ignorance at this point? Mm. Or so when you get someone that's frustrated, it's because, you know, they're saying something time and time again, time and time again, time for again. A reason, so, right. For a reason. For a reason. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, like I didn't know, but did you really not know or right. did you choose not to it's know? It's taught in the textbook. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my over. I know that's a, a, a deeper. No, that's um, actually, I like the point that you made because uh, to start with the children, because I think a lot of this ignorance starts with children. Mm -hmm. I think when you're at home, you have um, a responsibility, I guess, as a parent to prepare your child, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, as us being African-American individuals, we've had a certain... Um, narrative mm -hmm. that has been taught to us growing up Absolutely. just in general you know Absolutely. what I'm saying and on the same side or on the same token on the other side you have a narrative being taught to Absolutely. other children so I think that's where it starts um, you know you, you you can you can very well choose to kind of instill fear in people and I think mm -hmm. speaking personally I was taught almost to have like a little sense of fear going out and being extremely cautious knowing mm -hmm. who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, you kind of provoke an idea that 
there's always people out to get you, which mm -hmm. may be true, mm -hmm. but to go out in the world and act this certain way, it's not necessarily ignorance, yeah. but maybe you're giving me too much to where I can't think for myself when I meet a certain individual. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But And then to go back to your willful uh, ignorance, I, I like that point because people will claim that they don't know, it's yeah. not there, it doesn't Absolutely. exist, but like, for us to have a perpetual issue r risen over and over and mm -hmm. over again. I mean, I could say my parents, probably your parents, had this same kind of or a similar issue come yeah. up in their youth. Yeah. And prior to that, their yeah. parents had an yeah. issue. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Not the same exact thing, I, but, but like, something's there. It's some of the same rhetoric. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? It's some of the same issues. It's some, like, you can take um, you know, Malcolm X, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there's literally he's saying exactly the same things that we're saying now. Right now. Um, we're having the same issues, fighting for the same um, representation in certain areas. It's mm -hmm. the same exact re rhetoric. So I'm not, like you said, is it willful? Do you truly not know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and don't get me wrong, there is some people that live in lives and worlds. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate and blessed that I've been able to experience a lot of different walks of life. Absolutely. Um, and in some walks of life, they don't know about others Absolutely. walks of life. And that's a 100% a, a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's their world, this is their bubble in mm -hmm. which they exist in. And you know, outside that bubble, they're not really knowledgeable. And that's ignorance. And that's fine. That's, yes, right. absolutely, right. you know? Right. Um, I can't give you a, um, a first hand record of being in prison. Right. I've never been in prison, right. you know? Exactly. So, and that's just what it is. I can never tell you about prison life outside of what I've seen on TV, mm -hmm. read, uh, looked up, mm -hmm. or heard from, close friends and family, oh, and you know, and stuff yeah, like that. things right. like that. So right. like, that's, that's one of those things, like some people really truly don't know and I get it. You've never been to Cali before or you know it's what you see on TV. Exactly. You know, like exactly. things like that. So there's some true ignorance in the world. Absolutely. And then you have people who I think will hide behind that true ignorance yes. because they know there are people out there yes. that they might look like or act like that they can say, oh, well, I don't know. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. And, you know, with that, I think we might have to introduce like a new word for it because, mm. yeah, is it at that point, is it ignorance? I yeah. can't say that. Yeah. It's like you're choosing to be blind. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's willful ignorance, but then you're not really ignorant to anything at that point. You're actually probably more knowledgeable, so much so now that you're ignoring it. Mm -hmm. So, And, and, and I, I just wrote this post, but I, I forget the, the exact wording, but it was along the line, like, if you don't take accountability, you can't address it. If you can't address it, you can't correct it. Mm -hmm. So if you never take accountability that is actually happened or never come to this realization that, all right, this is actually a thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so you never can address it. And then you can never correct it because you never addressed it. And maybe that's the point though. Yeah, maybe absolutely. To, yeah. to keep, I think there, and now this might go a little a step ahead, a little mm -hmm. deeper than I want to go, but like, I think there's a, a sense of control that needs to be maintained in this country. Mm -hmm. I think in order to do that, you have to maintain the narrative. So yeah. there's there's ways to do that by maintaining this willful ignorance and stuff yeah, like that. Absolutely. Because then if people don't know it exists, if people are claiming that it doesn't, yeah. at least you still have people saying that there isn't a problem here. Yeah. We don't need to address it because there's nothing going on. Absolutely. So even though it's right there in your face, you know what I mean? There, it's right, cut and dry, video recorded in the newsprints. I can still ignore that because the next person saying, no, that's not Absolutely. you know what I mean? But like now we're controlling the narrative, controlling our people to be pitted against each mm -hmm. other when that's not the point, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So. I, I think accountability um, plays a big role in everything as well. Mm -hmm. I, it's one of these words that I always go back to. Um, if you ever look on my, my personal, your, you know, my personal page, like mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing different statements about accountability all the time because it's something that we really lack as a culture. Right. Um, and I think really in a lot of our social issues, you see the lack of accountability. Like no one's mm -hmm. saying you can erase it or undo it. Like right. we get it. It's there. Like, mm -hmm. Take accountability for your, the things you say, the do, mm -hmm. how you act, like point mm -hmm. blank. You do something that's foul, somebody's calling you out on it. All right, you did it. Address it, correct it, move forward. Like. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. we can't even do that because no one wants to take accountability absolutely, for anything. Absolutely. Um, and I think with that, just to kind of piggyback off that point, with the accountability, I think there also like has to be an understanding. I think that people have to be willing to work a little more collaboratively to where they're willing to accept criticisms mm -hmm. like that, like call, being called out for stuff. Mm -hmm. I think 
there's a weird thing happening right now. We have different generations speaking on the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the older generation talking about something based on what they know. Yeah. And what they know is the life that they lived. But I think with our generation, it's, it's, it's more imperative to kind of be in collaboration with your next man. So like, yeah. if I'm gonna say something to you given, let's say, I don't know, maybe I don't like your sneakers, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Maybe I I really don't like what Adidas stands for, you feel yeah. me? So now I'm trying to address that to you, but you feel so steadfast in the fact that you like Adidas yeah, that you're yeah. not gonna listen to me. Yeah. That can't be the case anymore. Yeah. You might not agree with what I'm saying, yeah. but at least listen, take into account, or take into account what I'm saying and mm -hmm. understand it. We can move forward better off as a people now because We've listened, you yeah. know what I mean? I think that's important. Yeah. It's listening to the people that are speaking up. Right now, there's a lot of people speaking up and people yeah. are not hearing them. Yeah. I mean, with that, accountability, I think, is a good action plan for moving forward as mm -hmm. a people. Mm -hmm. I think we have to address the issues and, and, and not shy away from them being real. I think people are afraid of stuff being too real mm -hmm. that it's easier to ignore and say it's not here. Yeah, and, and, and this this idea, I mentioned this as well recently within the last couple of weeks, this idea that you pretend that something doesn't exist so it doesn't exist, that's not real. Mm -hmm. You know, and we keep pretending that something, or even pretending that something is, something that it's not. Right. It doesn't make it what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we live in this fantasy world um, that that just doesn't help anywhere you know like it, it just continues to to have us going in circles right it's like a perpetual yeah, motion yeah. and like we were talking earlier and we were talking about how like maybe america has like this really messed up view that um we're kind of better than other people mm -hmm. so then within ourselves we can figure out our own social yeah. issues but i think a lot of what Americans have to do just to help our own society is to broaden their horizons, mm. broaden their their worldviews and to see what's going on. Because right now something special is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just happening in America. Mm -hmm. There's other places in the world, other countries that are backing what's going on here because it's yeah. not just a, an issue here. This yeah. is just a worldwide issue yeah. that to ignore it here, okay, we might be able to do that, but we can't ignore it in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think once people are willing to kind of see and open their minds to the fact that there's more things in life than America and yeah. Americans, and we have our issues here, but what what can we pull from other places that might help us here? Absolutely. You know what I mean? There's other things that work elsewhere that aren't working for us here, or maybe we haven't implemented here that we mm -hmm. could try that would help benefit us as a whole, um, but I think that we're just so caught up in this bubble that everything happens here, yeah. you know? pop culture, culture as a whole, yeah. you know, progression, technology, everything that's good in the world is mm -hmm. coming from America, and that's not true. Yeah. I think we have to just Is be, it by accident? I don't think it's by accident. Yeah. I don't think it's by accident. I wanna say it's because of like the, what we were saying before about the narrative being controlled. Yeah. As a child, you grow up thinking everything is good about America. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in the in movies, in, 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 Absolutely. in, in literature, you're reading about other places but it makes it seem like they're primitive yeah. you know they're living in huts or whatnot and they're not as developed as americans everything that other people are doing that is developed is mm -hmm. because of america you know when what you, i mean when you begin to learn more about like you said broadening your horizon mm -hmm. outside of america even your um you know your knowledge and information and history mm -hmm. um you begin to really learn what the the true narrative of the world um is you know mm -hmm. how did we come to be where we are um it wasn't always pretty it right. didn't happen right. um always just mm -hmm. but uh we, we came to be where we are but you know you brought in your your, your horizon and your knowledge to, to figure these things out right. then you start to understand you know right. america is um listen i have privileges and blessings here that um i wouldn't necessarily have other places sure. and um I, I identify that um i'm grateful for those things um, however, I do face a lot of um, mm. uh, oppression yeah, 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 yeah. that um, I don't necessarily other places. And I've been all over the world. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people can't talk from that type of world. I've right. been places where they treat me like royalty. Right. Um, Absolutely. And it's, and it's not that here. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to and why? do so much to prove myself on just a basic level, right. just to be accepted on a basic level. Mm -hmm. I got to go. Why? Why, mm -hmm. why can't my character speak for itself? Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Straight that's. Yeah, why that's a can't real thing. the moment I open my mouth, that's what 
is my resume. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. what speaks for me. It's like you get, and I think that is a lot to do with the narrative that's being controlled here because there's imagery that you have mm -hmm. here that on any side of the spectrum, you're gonna have certain imagery. And I think mm -hmm. this ties everything back in. It's like, when I go into the world and I see somebody in the supermarket, the moment I look at that person, I already have kind of something ticking in my mind mm -hmm. about who that person is, what t that type of person is going to be like, yeah. just basically, but it's because of the imagery that I have, you yeah. know what I mean? And that's something that might not be the same and elsewhere. So when you talk about being like royalty and in another country, mm -hmm. it's because that imagery is different, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You look like someone to them that should be treated that yeah. way. And why can't we get there here to where that we're accepting of the fact that everybody in this country has the ability to be looked at that way. Yeah. As long as you work hard, as long as you do what you have to do and maintain being, I guess, a progressive citizen, mm -hmm. um, why, why do I have to face that oppression the moment I wake up, you know what I mean? When yeah. I had nothing to do with the fact that I was born into this world the same as you, the same as you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard because that's obvious. You know that, I know that, but mm -hmm. then we have people that are out there in the world that are ignorant to the fact that this happens. Yeah. This is just something that is always ingrained in you that you have to be aware of that you are who you are, you look a certain way and people are gonna treat you a yeah. different way because of it. I know you mentioned earlier about, um, you know, going into the world with certain ideas mm -hmm. um, and that might have um, caused conflict and you actually giving people a, a chance for face value. Right. Um, I think at times it was preparation. Um, I, I don't, and I, I get what you said and I agree. I mm -hmm. think there was times where it's like, all right, I kind of got to... Um, fight against this idea that was put on my, yeah, yeah. Um, because this is what was instilled in me. Mm -hmm. um, but that part of it's preparation. Mm -hmm. I do think that because I've been prepared, when I ran into certain situations, I was you prepared. You already knew, yeah, Absolutely. you already knew. My mom was on top of, you know, preparing me and something as, as little as having ID in middle school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like in middle school, mm -hmm. Why having, is that important? Yeah, right. as a young, like, oh yeah, have your library card, have your school ID, mm -hmm. have your, in middle school, yeah, like, mm -hmm. you stuff like know. that, you know, like, you never and know. I ran into situations, I, I, have, I have stories where I ran into situations as a young person where clearly I was treated differently than the rest of my friends because of how I looked like, mm -hmm. but I was prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, to, none of the rest of them was prepared, right. but I was prepared because right. of how I, I knew who I was. And you that's know? almost a sense of maturity at that point mm -hmm. too, more so than like your peer. At a young age, you're prepared for but things. But why should I? You know, like that stuff you're like right. that, it's like why, right. why should? You're growing up a little too fast. You're mm -hmm. not able to enjoy the childhood that there, everybody mm -hmm. else is enjoying because you have to be prepared yeah. for things that not everybody else needs to yeah. be prepared for. Absolutely. And that, I think, that in itself will bring back this idea of ignorance because as mm -hmm. a child, you should almost be able to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have that 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 knowledge of things that are gonna go bad to yeah. you. You should be able to enjoy yeah. the blissful part this, of the this ignorance. pureness of yeah, thought. Being just that, a child, yeah. you know what I mean? But you're right. There's there's periods of time where, you know, you're being prepared, but what that does to you is like a kind of Cre it, it fortifies your mind, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You start to block off certain things because you're preparing yourself. And like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna speak on my situation. Like I grew up in New York City for like the early part of my life. Yeah. And like, just to see how children moved in New York City, mm -hmm. it's a completely different world than to move upstate. Yeah. Because, oh, I did I. you know I what I'm saying? City exactly. up until I was 10. It, same thing, that, same yeah. thing. So it's like, when you do that, you see children that are moving through life as if they were adults because yeah. that's just what you have to do. Yeah. Not to say that they're trying to prepare for bad things to happen, but it's just the way of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what you get taken away from you at that point is your childhood. Yeah. You know, and that's why I'm fortunate enough to have had the experience of moving out of there. Yeah. You know, absolutely. being able to, you know, play in some grass yes, and do absolutely. some stuff like absolutely. that and you know, have yes. a life outside of, you know, I remember I was like maybe like six, seven years old hopping on public transportation at the time where mm -hmm. it, like up here that's unheard of yeah. in certain places just because that's what I had to do to get to school. Yeah. But that took away from me 
being a child because I'm always worrying about, okay, this man might be, you know, out to get me yeah. or this person, you know, Absolutely. I just got to, you know, yeah. keep my head down, do what I got to do, go home and that's that. But yeah. at least I was able to enjoy a little part of the childhood, but it's still moving out of New York City where everyone looks like you mm -hmm. to the suburbs where, you know, you're one of few. Yeah. It's like now it's a different type of preparation. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, like, absolutely. why do I have to do that? I'm you. still the same kid that I was in New York City that I am up here. Mm -hmm. why, does the, why does the narrative change? I know. You feel me? But that is a good point. That is I, a good that's point. I didn't know that we both lived we down had, there. And yeah. it's, that's crazy because you have a similar outlook on things. Yeah. And I think that's why we're able to talk about this stuff and have, the, and have the similar perspectives because you've seen a lot mm -hmm. and it might not be what I saw, but I can say the same thing. Yeah. I've seen a lot of things. But and just how you how you articulated yourself to break that down, it's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I can touch base on a lot of those things, mm -hmm. being, being in the city. Mm -hmm. um, I know one thing, my mom uh, made a point to put us in a school that was very um, far from where we lived that had people that looked different, yes. that had yes. people that was from different mm -hmm. you know, backgrounds and things. Mm -hmm. And that was a whole nother type of eye opening before I moved up here. But it was right. the first time you I already really had like a broad and yeah, horizon. Just, just a little bit, but right. really moving up here, just like you were saying, mm -hmm. like, yes, I have friends from all over, exactly. doing sports from all over. You see um, just different things. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's, that's right. You gotta be prepared in a whole different way at that point. Exactly. So like I grew up like a single child. I have siblings, but mm -hmm. under my mother, I grew up a single child and I lived in Harlem and my school was all the way up Central Park, okay. where, you know, most of the people are white, they're mm -hmm. wealthy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to like a, what's considered a performing arts school at that point. Mm -hmm. And my best friends growing up, I had um, a Muslim friend mm -hmm. and my two best friends that I like did sleepovers with were white. Yeah. And that wasn't weird to me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? My best friends, Corey and Liam, and like that was normal to me. But what opened my eyes was I would come home or I would talk about this in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I would talk about my friends Corey and Liam, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that's weird. Like, it, it, it became weird at that Got point, you. but yeah. to me, it was just me having my friends, yeah, you know, the absolutely. people that I related to. But in that moment, I was introduced to this thing that I live with till this day, yeah. where we're different. Yeah. And because we're different, we should think that we should be almost like, like, not separated, but maybe I shouldn't, Firstly, go for that friend as yeah. opposed to the friend that looks like me or something yeah. like that. But like, that's what I was able to kind of break away from. It's like you have that perspective and that preparation, but the what changes things is what you're able to do with that preparation. Absolutely. Like as an individual, you grow up, you are able to develop your own kind of mindset, mm -hmm. but you also have those things instilled with you. So you have a choice at a point where you can stick with that stuff yeah. and be almost angry mm -hmm. at everything Absolutely. around you because Absolutely. you have all of this preparation. Absolutely. Or you can use that and say, oh, well, how can I, as a person who looks like how I look, yeah. make this better for the next generation of mm -hmm. people who look like me, you know what I'm saying? And I think this ties all into just addressing ignorance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I think even, even within, uh, inside ourselves, um, being angry and retaliating with hate, if we don't address certain demons in our closet, um, it's not going to work as well. Um, if we don't come back to this idea of love or this general consensus of genuine love, yes. because if that was the the heart of it right now, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have a it lot of the issue. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. So you're right. even on our side to come to that point yeah. and not be resentful mm -hmm. forever and actually give forgiveness and things of that nature, like it, it, it goes, I'm not going to say it goes both ways equally, mm -hmm. um, but there is a part that we will play absolutely. Um, absolutely, as well. Yep. You have to break that idea and you're completely right. You have to be, I guess, confident within yourself that you're willing to promote that idea of love. But in order to do that, you got to be loving as mm -hmm. a person. You have to have that within yourself. You can't just speak it. Mm -hmm. You have to have it. And how can I get there? Okay, I have to address maybe you can call it traumas yeah. that I've dealt with in my yeah. childhood. You said you've dealt with experiences absolutely. that your peers didn't. Yeah, absolutely. I can say the same thing for me. And honestly, I was blessed to not experience a lot of things as a child. I experienced a lot of my mis misfortune later in life mm -hmm. when I was older because as a child, very clean cut, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Short hair, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? No facial hair, looking, whatever. Always yeah. the part, button down shirts all yeah. the time. 
I moved down south, I came back home, a couple tattoos, had piercings, mm -hmm. long hair, looking a little different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm the, still the same person, yeah. but I'm moving to a place that didn't really accept that version of me. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So I was able to kind of have my eyes open to the fact that, damn, you know what? People look at me a little differently now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was able to grow up included in most things because of how I kept myself. Yeah. But then as time went on and how I kind of carry myself now, it's like, I'm still Jaha, yeah. you know, I'm still the same person, but now I'm looked at a little differently. And why is that the case? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. You guys were willing to look at me in a certain way and respect me. I mm -hmm. think that's really important. Gotcha. You were willing to respect me when I looked a certain way, but now it's like, I'm just another, yeah. whatever you want to put to it, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, well at that point, what am I doing differently? What can I do differently? Yeah. All I can do is love. What sucks is, and this is what I thought too for a long time, and it's a conflict that we, we deal with is, I thought I could be good enough as well. Um, I thought that my character can truly Speak have, for me. Yes, right. um, that's, that's really what I always wanted. That's really what I put forth for, first. Mm -hmm. um, I don't sell my, my looks. I don't sell my accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I sell my character all day, every day, um, because um, you know that's what I stand on. Right. And that's all I can stand on. Right. But when I started to get to the point where it's like, it doesn't matter how many degrees I have. It doesn't matter how many trips I did to help orphans. It doesn't matter how you know, articulate I am or right. It doesn't, you it know, doesn't. they're going to the see what the day, they see when they see. Exactly, bro. And that's like, and it's that's kind sad. of like a coming of age thing that is sad because yeah. we shouldn't have to feel like we have to kind of uh, um, come to terms with this dilemma within ourselves. Like, I should be good enough just who I am. Yeah. And that's something that I dealt with growing up where I grew up with like girls because yeah. like, you know, whatever, I, I like what I like and yeah. you know, whatever. And I had my girlfriends, but it was like, I was introduced to the idea that people didn't like me. And I'm like, yeah. but why though? Like my whole defense for myself was like, if you give me five minutes, just talk to me. Yeah. I'm gonna change every Absolutely. idea that you have about me because Absolutely. I know I'm, I am better than what you're giving me right Absolutely. now just by looking at Absolutely. me. So it's like, I just want you to give me that chance. I think Absolutely. that's the important part. You have to give people the chance to prove themselves or just to even, um, show themselves as who they are, as Mahadi, as Jaha. You give yeah, me that chance and I guarantee you, I, either you like me or you won't, but at least I was given the opportunity to absolutely. do it. You know what I mean? I agree. So that's good. I appreciate you, Mahadi, for yeah, coming absolutely. on. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me. Yes, sir. It was dope and I look forward to being back again. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right.